Talk it talk. In the movies, they always go out and find a kid who's really good to join the team. Hey, that's right. We need a ringer. We need a Canadian. We've seen Fourier on skates before, so it all of the talk is nonsense. They're dinosaurs. They know how to, like, yeah. survive. I got a shout-out Razor. That donut's for him. Ah, uh, don't worry. I got Bruins plate. People get out of my way. Au revoir. Have a good game. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The Bruins. Oh, boy. The Bruins got a win, and uh, as we may be stumbled into... Road Razor is yeah. with us on the Harbor <laughs> One Hotline. Our guy, Andrew Raycroft with Gresh and Fourier. Hello, Razor. How is lovely Hello. South Florida? Good morning. Yeah, the, the, the sawgrass mills is, is nice. I'm easing my way into Road Razor, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get a big win tonight and then, then go from there. I, I would, my way I would like to know what Road Razor was really like and what it meant back when you were just uh, in the league and traveling from city to city. Meet me some Road Razor. Here we go. Hello, Edmonton. No, I'm not- back. All business for right. you. There's okay. not a lot of time, you know. The game, you gotta, you gotta be dialed in every minute that you're on the road in, in professional sports. You know that. Yeah. Plus, when you're, you know, when you're, when you're, when you got a big uh, Thursday night in Kamloops, I don't know if uh, there's an Applebee's <laughs> on the corner. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I, <laughs> you would assume it closes early, <laughs> but uh, be that as it may, Razor, they did it. They did it by God. Somehow they did it. How did they do it? They they showed a lot of resiliency and a lot of mental toughness and, and a lot of good details. They really stuck to their game. Um, we gave the Toronto Maple Leafs a lot of credit for their adjustments in the series. At 3-1, they looked like they had no idea how to play hockey, and they really turned it around. And it did take the Bruins uh, a couple of games to figure that out. And I thought in Game 7 they had full control of their game. And, and of course, their their big players came through – all the way through that game, but especially in the end. And and what a relief, right? Like you could feel the relief in the building and the city and the hockey fans. And, and now you, you get to move on to the second round and guys, I said it, you know, I said it a lot, right? Like how hard it is to get through one round, the first round of the Stanley cup playoffs with the intensity and, and everybody's for, you know, hundred percent focus. And, and we saw that, and, and for them to get through it, I think it, it's huge for this new core of, of Bruins players. Yeah, and, and Razor, I agree with you because uh, there, I felt like there was this burden that they were carrying around from last year, real or perceived. I felt like it was it was in the atmosphere, and you know, and how freeing is this for them to go into the next round without that burden attached to them? I think it's I think it's massive. Uh, it, it feels massive, um, of course. The players do look at it a little bit differently. When you're really in it, uh, it, it, it's probably not quite as severe as, as us from the outside who, who don't have to play and, and can observe. But it, it, it deep down somewhere in all of them, it, it's freeing. It's, it's a huge relief. I'm sure relief is, is the bigger word than excitement to have won that round. And, and I, it really does free them up going forward. And they can lean on that experience of, of going through and, and um, what they gain just from game seven alone. I think we're going to see it real early in this series. Who do you think um, benefited the most from the win? Like who the, the overall series win? who do you think benefited the most? Uh, well, I guess if I only had to pick one name, I'd say David Pasternak, just being able to score an OT winner in game seven as, the marquee player on the team, the marquee score, one of the top marquee scores in the league. He continues to uh, keep that reputation going. Um, if I could use a few names, I would go Swayman, sure. not yeah. going all in three in game seven. I think that's huge for him going forward to, to, to win that series the way he did, be as consistent as he was. Charlie McAvoy, Hampus Lindholm, um, his game seven, um, for the first to win a round here in Boston for the first time, I think that will change narrative on him. That great pass to Mac or to, to Pasternak and his goal, I think that changes his narrative a little bit going forward. So, so there's a few guys, but I, but I think especially the the bit those big three names and and how well they contributed in Game Seven 
will go a long way for for how their their perception is. Our buddy Andrew Razor Raycroft is down in Florida. Bruins Panther game one tonight. Razor all over it for us. Joins us here to uh, break down game one and get ready for the series. Uh, who out of the Toronto series played their way more into more minutes? Like our guy, $10 shake who calls the show out in New York said he was impressed with Mason Lowry. I know every time it seems like Justin Brazo is out there, good things happen. Are there some dudes who've maybe played their way into some consistent minutes against Florida? Yeah, you just answered the question. Uh, those two guys, Lowry and, and Brazo, the, the way those two played in game seven, under the brightest of lights, under the biggest, on the biggest of stages in Game Seven, for them to to grow that way in front of us, uh, to to be able to to take that and all that pressure and harness it and use it in a good positive way, it is massive. I talked to Mason this morning here um, for for the Nesson show tonight, and and just how confident and what he took out of it and how how nervous he was playing his first that was his first game seven he's ever played in his life and 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 for him to just go out and play like it was a normal Tuesday night is is huge for for him for the Bruins organization going forward and and I think for this series I mean he's he's changed what the back end looks like going into to Florida if he can simplify and keep and play hard in the defensive zone but also skate through the neutral zone like he did in game seven. It's a, it's a massive advantage for the Bruins. And then a Brazo, uh, this we talked last year, the, the Florida Panthers, their physicality, how much they want to bang and forecheck. Brazo adds that that size that, that we looked for, the length, and, and then the smarts in and around the, the small, dirty areas on the ice. So those two guys made themselves – Real NHLers, in my opinion, in Game 7. So we're talking to boots on the ground, Raycroft, down in Florida, getting ready to call this game. <laughs> what exactly are you doing, right? Are you – what network? Are you just doing some stuff for Nesson? Yeah, I'm working Nesson. So we did – what we're doing some pregame stuff before the game. So pregame on Nesson, 7 to 8, as usual. Um, crank out a little bit of intermission action as well, and then and then post game. So okay. basically, everything but the game uh, stays the same. So so tune in in essence for all the the real coverage. You and Jaffe with the two bedroom suite. No, no, it's it's a solo suite, guys. Don't no, no. Oh, I, I am oh, big timer. Plenty of oh, room. Yeah. All, all his demands. Yeah, that's right. Clothes <laughs> oh, will yeah. be clothes will be rider. on one side of the. Yeah, that's right. You got a rider. There you go. Dude, that, Would uh, yeah. yellow M and M's good for you? Did uh, <laughs> did uh, Montgomery uh, save his job with that win? Uh, that's or, tough. maybe I, you, maybe you don't know if it was in jeopardy or not. But if it was in jeopardy, do you think he? Uh, I don't want you to give away any secrets or any, you know, internal oh, no, knowledge I, I, that you have. That, no, there's, there's, I, ha, I am way too far down the totem pole for knowledge like that. I think there would be, like, let's be honest, there's a lot of questions either way. I, I don't know if that actually comes to fruition, but uh, there, there's certainly no reason to talk about that now. And, and if you, they had a loss to 3 1 series, I think that's just inevitable in pro sports. So, Fortunately, we don't have to have that conversation today. That that's the best part of my job, and them winning is is uh, we get to have fun again. That's right. It's not about people being fired. It's about uh, how do you handle the goalies and make sure that everyone stays engaged. I know that last round it turned into just going with Swayman. It feels like Swayman gets game one, but how? What's your read, Mister Goalie, on the goalie situation? And how you gotta keep Linus Olmark still engaged in all of this? Well, yeah, I, from from my eye watching today, I felt like Swayman is going to get the start tonight. Um, but Coach Montgomery talked afterwards and was asked that, and he said we had a plan in round one. We we're going to stick to that plan here in round two. Uh, both guys, the 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 usual. So. Reading between all of those lines, I guess we see all marking game too. If that is, you know, if, but is it, the question is, and that's how he can answer it and still keep everyone in the air. The, the, the question is, was the plan just to rotate in the first two games of the entire playoffs, or was it to rotate each series the first two games and go from there? So um, I, 
he also talked about a lot of games coming up. They're playing every other night in this entire series. So you're getting seven games now in 13 days on top of the game seven. So he talked about getting both guys in. So, I, again, I, I don't know. I, I, I want to I wait and see come, what, Wednesday morning. But my sense listening to that was that they're, they're gonna, we're going to see both guys here in this series. Razor, um, how much rest is needed? Like, how is it? Is it exhaust? Is it too much to ask a goalie to go? You know, every other day, is it? Do they get more mentally and physically worn down than a, a normal player? No, I think no, no, they don't. It's 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 like everyone else, and I think that you know what you see in the playoffs is, and when you run a guy all the way through, is you know. 90% of the games are good, and then everybody kind of has an okay game because they do get a little tired, a little mental fatigue, and, and it might be hard to get up as second round and third round comes on because playoff hockey doesn't feel the same. Now it just feels like what you've been doing for a month already. and that. But, you know, most teams don't have another guy they can go to. So that's the kicker is the Bruins are trying to find a way to use both goaltenders so they have a fresh goaltender every night. Most teams, the goalie's going to do it, and he's going to get through. Of course, they're they're pro athletes. Like physically, it's not a you know it's not a problem, and you can make saves every night. It's just that if you can find that extra one or two percent within a series, say later in the second round or later in the third round, that's an advantage. And 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 that's what the Bruins are really trying to capture is having the freshest of fresh every night in goal. Uh, Razor, the difference between Florida and Toronto, I think, is pretty significant in terms of their style of hockey. Number one, am I right or wrong on that? And then number two, if Florida is that different from Toronto, how and how do the Bruins then need to respond? So, yes, if you had to ask me this question Ten days ago, I would have said absolutely. They're so different. It's not even. But the way the Bru- the way the Leafs played games five, six, and seven is very similar to how Florida's going to play tonight. Florida's a better hockey team. Florida's a deeper group of forwards. Uh, they're a deeper group on the back end, and their goalie is better than whatever the Leafs are going to throw. But the style that the Maple Leafs adjusted to in game five, with clogging the middle of the ice in the defensive zone, blocking a million shots getting in the way of everything, and then offensively dumping every puck in, uh, getting in on forecheck, making the Bruins go 200 feet, making them chip pucks off the glass is what Florida does. So I, I, get, I think, and, and watching the last three games, I think it really benefits the Bruins having played that way for three games and having to fight through that and getting one shot on goal in the first period in game six and, and not scoring until nine minutes left in game. Like that's the kind of game this is going to be tonight and in this series so i think in hindsight in hindsight we're going to see that the leafs did the bruins a favor in the second round by switching and adjusting their style and not just free flowing because i think the bruins are ready for it a little bit more than what they were last season because of the way the leafs played the last three games yeah so there's nothing like so florida isn't sitting there going oh wow i love how the toronto uh you know adjusted and, and played them it really forced the bruins to struggle this is kind of what they're doing already. So they just need to do it better? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, exactly. I, again, Florida's going to do it better than the yeah. Leafs did. And, and so, but again, but, but, what, but what I'm saying is, no, but what I'm saying is the, the Bruins will be able to adjust quicker to that because they weren't playing five, four games and they weren't going up and down the ice and trading two on one chances that they won't get against Florida. So just the mindset of, of sticking to it and that resiliency that we talked about and chipping pucks out of the zone, that mindset doesn't have to change because they're going to get a lot of that tonight. Uh, Razor Brandon Carlo, according to Jim Montgomery, uh, welcomed a baby, uh, but he is not with the team. Uh, don't know how all that works. What is kind of the... I don't know. Help us out with the protocol on all of this. Like, you know, you can't control when the baby's going to come, obviously, but you can get on a plane and be in South Florida by, what, 4 o'clock if they want uh, Carlo in the lineup. What's your read on all this? Yeah, my guess is he's playing tonight. My guess is, like you said, he's he's going to be on a plane or if he isn't already right now or or is already here now and just didn't skate this morning. 
Um, I, my guess is, is, you know, it sounded like everything went really well yesterday for him and his wife and his family. And, uh, you can, you can get on and, and work off one game adrenaline. And, uh, we all who have had kids, you, you know, the boost you get, uh, when, when that happens and, and how, you know, the, of course, perspective, but just how excited you are about life, just how happy you are about life. And, when when and how easy it is to play hockey when stuff like this happens so my guess is that he didn't commit to it because i guess who knows but um my my sense is he would love to have had a baby yesterday and come win a hockey game today have uh have you ever had a uh, close kid call during your career where you had to either uh cut it close or maybe miss a game or something like that no, we did a pretty decent job planning, maybe not on purpose, but um, my son was born end of July and uh, and the twins were born real early, but that was uh, end of April. So uh, no, no hockey miss, no, no, no uh, pagers for the trainers to keep an eye on. Pagers, and, uh, I love it. Yeah, right. Remember that? <laughs> Remember guys yep. without the pagers on the side? Wait like, a minute. Oh, so, so hang on a second. Had your wife gone into labor and someone had to send oh. a, a code to a pager on someone on the training staff? 911. Yeah, that, like what would the code be to let this guy know that, oh, my God, uh, uh, Mrs. Raycroft is about to spit out a kid? No, it would be an absolute urgent nine one one. Get off the my my wife would uh, expect me there no matter what, and uh, I would Ooh. be there no matter what. So certainly, uh, you know, Stanley Cup non-existent. Other than that, a regular season game. No, you can miss that Ooh. for uh, for for birth. So that would be the only dispensation your wife would give you is that if it were big game cup final, okay, I can let it slide. I'll handle this one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Any of the any of the other variety of games, um, she would certainly tell me that I'm I'm not that important to the team, and and you can be here to do this. <laughs> Corey, did you ever have any uh, close kid calls or anything no, like that during the no, season? Never. You were all planned. Uh, pretty much uh, knew exactly when it was going to happen because you try. I mean, well, I just like the fact that I always wanted to miss camp. Yeah, there you go. I wanted an excuse to miss camp. Like, you know, camp was like way too long. It was like, well, geez, I just had a child. But even back then it was like, (laughs) it was like, well, okay, you've been gone 24 hours. You need to get back. We're going over red zone. Now you'd be screwed. They're building that Chuck E. Cheese down there after that NFLPA ceremony or uh, 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 survey they did. I wouldn't be surprised if they have like a birthing center in the new addition (laughs) renovation at Gillette. There you go. You can run in at halftime. You can hold your white hand at halftime. Just hold it in, man. There we go. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Razor, have fun down in uh, South Florida. Uh, is, uh, Is golf booked? Ooh, I there's a few there's a few lines in the water for tomorrow. Possibly, I'm gonna see. I got you know again. I'm all business. So I gotta get some work the, done. Uh, let, possibly, mm, but there are a lot of hockey guys down here, and um, there's been some 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 invitations. Let's say. Okay, hold on, if I may. When you say lines in the water, you're really fishing for someone to hook you up, right? When you say oh. there's been invitations, it's you inviting yourself. Well, there's there's been uh, hey maybe we'll pull this off after I maybe initiated that I'm coming down like are you guys around and what's what's going on on a Tuesday in Florida is there anything to do um, maybe those kind of texts were sent and okay. I'm waiting for 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 the response but yes I'm certainly uh, the 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 nicest country club wins let's say that let's, let's put it that way I okay. love it I like it between Razor and Lou we're learning a lot <laughs> about this whole country road clubs trip. on the road deal hey Razor thanks man we appreciate it. you gave us uh, twenty minutes can't thank you enough we'll talk to you soon it's always my pleasure have fun watching tonight all right there you go the great Andrew Razor Raycroft he'll be uh, doing all kinds of breakdown and stuff on Nesson and with us here on uh, W E E I Sunny. Remember that song? Yeah. Well, that'll song. That'll tie into Big Deal, No Big Deal next. From the Rubenstein Law Studios, 1-800-BOS-LEGAL. This is WEEI.